Calculating the slope given two points. If we have two coordinate points, we can calculate the slope of a line or how steep that line is. We can do that by looking at both the y direction and the x direction. So we want to look at how much we've changed between the points in the y direction and the x direction, and then we're going to look at the rate or the ratio between the two. So if we take our change in y, that's what that delta y means, over our change in x, that's going to give us the slope. This letter right here is just a Greek letter, delta, and it means the change in, how much we've changed between the two points. Now we can just look at this and figure out how much we've changed in each direction. Let's go ahead and start with delta y, how much we've changed in this vertical direction. So if we look at these two points, we've gone over here from negative one, we're at negative one here, our y coordinates negative one, all the way up to four. So we've changed a total of one, and then plus an additional four, a total of five. We can also calculate this by taking the end point and subtracting where we started for, from. So we can take a four minus a negative one. That minus a minus one is going to give us a positive five. So four minus a negative one gives us a five. We can calculate the change in x also by looking at it in this case. Our x, we started over here at negative three and we end over here at two. So we've gone three this direction and then an additional two more. So our change in x is, is actually five as well. We can also take the ending coordinate and subtract where we started from. So a two minus a negative three. And that gives us a two minus negative three, which is a five. So our change in y over our change in x is going to give us how steep that line is. So our change in y is five and our change in x is five. So the slope of this line is delta y over delta x, which just means change in, five over five, which is one. That means for every one I go up, I go over one as well. Sometimes this is also said as rise over run. How much you rise compared with how much you run. So rise one, run one. Rise one, run one. So our slope between these two points for this line is one. And the slope stays the same all along that line. Let's look at another example. Say we have the coordinate points negative four comma three and one comma negative three. We want to find the slope. So we're going to look at the change in y over the change in x or delta y over delta x. So first we can just look at this because we've got it nice and graphed here. So we can look at the change in y. Now our y coordinate here is three and notice we've gone down to negative three. So we've gone down this time instead of up. So our change is going to be negative for our y. So in order to get this change in y, we want this distance right here or the vertical distance. So we went three here and then an additional three. And since we went down, that change is negative six. We can also calculate that by taking how we ended our end point right here, negative three, and subtracting where we started from. So a negative three minus three, negative three minus three, which is also negative six. Now the reason I'm doing it this way, where I'm starting with the end point and subtracting the beginning point, is because hopefully we can have a formula so that we can calculate any points, even if we can't graph them, we can calculate the slope. Now let's look at our change in x, our change in our x direction. Well, we started off at negative four on our x direction, and we end up at one. So we went four this way, and we're running this way, four this way, and an additional one. So our change in x is five. Now we can also use the ending point, subtracting the starting point, so we have a five, Oops, five equals. We have a one, our ending point, minus a negative four, which gives us five. So our change in y over our change in x is going to give us a negative six fifths, and it's a negative slope, so we would expect our slope value to be negative. Also, sometimes we represent slope 
using an M. I'm not really sure why we use an M for slope, but oftentimes in our textbooks we use M as a variable for slope, so if you ever see M, that's what that means. And so our slope here, for every negative six we fall, we run five. And that's true all along that line. Now let's take a look at the general formula. So if we can come up with a general formula, we can actually write a computer program to calculate the slope for us given any two points. And we can use it ourselves if we have some ugly numbers that we don't want to graph and actually count on there and some fractional values. It's nice to have a formula we can use in order to calculate it. So m, which represents our slope, is equal to, this is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now this sub right here just belongs to this variable. It's just talking about a specific y coordinate. You're not multiplying, it's not to a power or anything like that. That 2 just tells us which y coordinate we're talking about. The same with y sub 1. We say sub because it's low here. So if we have point 1 that we're talking about, let's say it's 2 comma 3, the x coordinate would be represented by an x sub 1. So that's really our first coordinate of, that, of, of this particular point. And our y sub 1 is the y coordinate of point 1. For point 2, x sub 2 represents the x coordinate of our point 2, and y sub 2 represents the y coordinate for our point 2. So let's take a look at calculating the slope here. And I've gone ahead and graphed it over here. And I've also labeled my point 2 and my point 1. This is x sub 1, y sub 1 x sub 2, y sub 2, and if we calculate the change in y, we want to look at the difference between those. So our y sub 2, we end up on the y-axis up here at 4, but this is not the change. 4 is not the change in it because we, have, we started at 3. So we started right here at 3 at our y sub 1, and we, we rose or we went up in the vertical direction 1. So my change in y is 1, and I can write that as 4 minus where we started from on the y-axis of 3. So 4 minus 3 is my change in y, and that's equal to 1. Now I could do the same thing with my x-coordinates. So I have right here on the x-axis, I've gone over to 6, but I didn't start at 6. I started at 2. And so when I'm looking at that, I have to take this 6 minus where we started from, or the 6 minus 2. So if I do 6 minus 2, that's my change in x, 6 minus 2, which is 4. So my slope is 1 fourth. For every 1 I go up on the y-axis, I go over 4. Now what if I switched my points? What if instead of making this point 1, that was point 2, and instead of making this point 2, that was point 1? Would the formula still work? Yes, it would. So my slope I'm going to instead have this be my y2. So right here I had the 4 be my y2, this was point 2. Now I'm going to have this one be my y2 instead. So y2 minus y1, remember I swapped it, over y, x2 minus x1. So this 2 right here, I've swapped places, I've changed point values. So 3 minus a 4 gives me a negative 1. 2 minus a 6 gives me a negative 4. I have negative 1 over negative 4, which is the same as 1 fourth. So it doesn't matter which point you assign, point 1 or point 2, you're still going to get the slope. And that slope carries through that whole line. For every 1 that you go up, you're going to go over 4. And that is a positive slope as well. So now using that general slope formula, we can do some little bit harder problems or we can feed it to a computer. So our general slope formula, M remember represents slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Say we're given coordinate points like this. Really we don't want to graph those coordinate points. Negative 150 comma 337 and then we have 72 comma 130. So I'm going to assign them as x, this is my point 1, and this is my point 2. Remember, it doesn't matter which one you assign that. And I like to write my x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, just because it, it decreases the errors I have. And so then I'm just going to go ahead and put them into my formula. 
So for y sub 2, I'm going to put 130 in, and then subtract y sub 1, my y sub 1, from my point 1 is 337, over my x sub 2, which is 72, minus my x sub 1. That's a negative, so I have minus a negative 150. And I go ahead and do the calculations here, and I have 130 minus 337, that is a negative 207, over 72 plus 150 is going to give me 222. That is a negative slope, so that means I go down negative 207 every time I move 222 in the horizontal direction. So this is my slope. I didn't even have to graph it. I used my handy dandy formula in order to solve it.